Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. Um, to start with, what's a mummy's favorite kind of music? Rap. Okay, it only gets better from here. So today I wanted to talk about, well, a couple weeks ago I was watching a video by Chill Computer Guy, um, who by the way has lots of great content. I recommend that you check out his channel. But he was talking about the inspector panel over here and he mentioned a little bit this MPE button and it kind of blew my mind. So what MPE, what MPE is, is MIDI polyphonic expression. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking. And it lets you control individual notes instead of having to do, for example, a pitch bend on all the notes at the same time. So for example, if I play a three note chord, I can keep two of the notes constant, but the third note I can be bending up or down. Kind of really unique and something that we've not been able to do before. So just to show you a little bit about how that's done, first of all, I've got my VST loaded up. It's just Rapture Pro. And so when I click on this title bar, I guess here, that'll pop up here and then you click this MPE button. And now that MPE is, is enabled. So let's go into the editor and I've just got four notes already in here. I know amazing stuff, right? So to start using it, what I need to do is click this little button right here, micro, micro pitch expression editing. And you can see it's got these black lines on here now. So if I click here, and then I put another dot here and just kind of drag that up to where I want it to go. So let's listen and see what that does. Okay. So that threw me for a little bit because I would expect just visually for this to bend all the way up to the C4. Well, I finally figured out what was going on. So you see over here, I, the pitch bend range is set at plus or minus 48. This actually has to match whatever you have it set in in your VST. So right now I know in Rapture Pro, here I'll just pull it up, you can see down here it's got bend down to or bend up to semitones. Okay, so just to get a matching I'll pull this down to two and what that sounds like got us up to semitones, but not quite all the way. So what you need to do is in your synth, and every synth is different, I know, but in this case, I can change it to 24, 24 being the max semitones up or down. Um, and then I know that I have to do that for each of the elements too. Okay, so once I've done that, then I go back over here and I drag that up to 24 so it matches whatever you have in your synth. And now when we listen to it, now it matches. And just to take it a little bit further, let's see if it goes all the way down to 24 and then of course this will go back up to 12. So very nice. So then what we can do is if we want to make it a little bit smoother, you can click in there and add a dot and then hold the alt key to adjust the curve. If I can get it in there, same thing over here. I was talking about now if we start adding in some different notes so what we're expecting is for these two and these two to stay constant right 
And so that's exactly what they did. And then, um, let's take this one. Just make it a short drag, but then this one. I'm going to drag it all the way up there and make it a little bit smoother too. Right? And so that's where kind of the fun stuff comes in. You can play with that and have things changing at different rates, um, kind of almost morphing. And of course, once you get some more interesting voices in there, then things really sound um, a lot more interesting to the ear because not everything is happening at the same time. Um, a gotcha to watch out for, I noticed this the other day, is that if you use something that has delay or um, reverb on it, when the bend gets down to this point, what you'll hear is that the delay or the reverb, once it ends, reaches the end, it reverts to the original pitch. So I've got my pitch here at C4, and then everything bends down, the, the delay and the reverb and everything as part of that voice bends down to the C2. But then when it stops, the stuff that hangs over, the reverb or the, the delay, inside the synth goes back to the original pitch. So that's just something to watch out for. Um, and then real quick, the other thing that I wanted to show you is you know, we don't talk about these keyboards down here very much, but if you're on um, um, a touchscreen computer, this can actually be useful. I mean, with my mouse, I can only touch one at a time, but on the touchscreen on my laptop, I could touch, you know, three notes at a time and play chords on here. So watch now what happens when I play this MIDI part. So I would imagine if you are halfway decent at playing this, you could actually do this while you're playing and record in the pitch bends. Right. Um, so yeah, really cool stuff. I'm really grateful to Chill Computer Guy for showing us that and it's kind of opened up a lot of new stuff for me to play around with. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, um, like the channel, and subscribe. And before I forget, again, bishopswest.com slash bitwig setup. I've got a free guide there for you guys just about setting up um, Bitwig Studio so that when you open it up, you can get right to music making. You don't have to go around and do some of the simple things. And I just kind of show you a few easy steps to set it up to get right to your music making as quickly as possible. So again, it's a free download, bishopswest.com slash bitwig setup. Um, go download it. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time.